And another connection play, um, Kendall Gill, who's been on the show two times. Oh, that's is that right? Oh, that's my yeah. big brother. No, he told me. He told me. I do my research, man. Oh, wow. I do my Chicago research, man. Chicago, we family. Basketball, uh-huh. baseball, football, we're all family. Uh-huh. Yeah, I got to make you feel at home when you're in here, man. And uh, uh, let's work backwards a little bit because I know you can talk forever about your career. So we'll just start up. Uh, we'll start up top with uh, something happened last Friday that, that infringes upon you, right? Correct. Uh, yeah. Brian versus uh, uh, Bermain Stavern and your issue with the WBA. Yes. Start us, start us off. and Okay. Well, back, uh, you know, God's been blessing me. You know, I'm like one of the last Mohicans of Class 96, I say. You know, that's the Floyd Mayweather, Fernando Vargas, David right. Reed. I mean, the whole Class of 96, Nate Jones, just to name a few. Uh, you know, I'm the last of the Mohicans. And, um, you know, here I am back in 2000. And 14, I'm president, you know, at the age, I was your age, actually. <laughs> finally, <laughs> yeah, fighting against Ruslan Chagai in his hometown and Grozny, Chechnya, former Republic of the USSR. And, uh, you know, a lot of people was worried, even my mom, you know, was, was concerned. So I already didn't let her know. And But it was a, a twist and turn prior to that championship fight. You know, uh, my, my wife was pregnant. Um, it was like a couple of weeks before the fight, you know, she was going to give birth. So, of course, you know, I was training hard, best shape of my life. Two weeks before the fight, my wife had birth. Next thing you know, uh, it was complicated. My son got sick. My wife had a bad birth, you know, bad, you know, uh, you know, my had a bad birth with my son. So, one thing that to she ended up, kept, you know, getting fever. She got sick. So, there you go. It just disrupted my training. You know, boxing, remember, it's 80% mental, 20% physical. Mm-hmm. So, my mind, I was all right. So, you know. Couple of days passed, you know, my wife's, you know, stable, whatever. So, man, it was like a week and a couple of days now before the fight. So, I, I already made up my mind, you know, I, I, I can't leave my family. I mean, I'm in the best shape of my life. You know, it's my last hurrah, you know, 43, 44, you know, around that age. And, um, man, I, I'm like, man, but my son's in the hospital. My wife's in, I mean, this is my yeah. family. I mean, right. It's just, it, it is what it is. But then I got this call um, from, the, the the president of Grozny Chechnya, Kadyrov, you know the guy. You know I never heard of him until you know I did my research. You know he's a tyrant. I mean, but the guy I can't say too much about, bad about him. But what the story say, you know Grozny Chechnya, they had wars there with other regional people, and you know because the, they're Muslims, a Muslim country. So you know it was like they, their their cities were all blown up and all that. Where I fought yeah. Grozny Chechnya, and then next you know you know. I mean, he called me through a, a, a mutual friend of one of my former uh, attorney. You know, one day my attorney, one day my promoter, this John Work guy, John Work, who's always, you know, trading hats, ended up, you know, pretty much backstabbing me throughout this ordeal, which I'll be telling you more about this character, you know, my former manager, promoter, whatever. But uh, they, they, they ended up, uh, you know, agreeing, you know, for me. To, to get to Grozny Chechnya. Now, remember, I'm still in the hospital with my wife, so she started getting a little better. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they were like, man, you know, a day before, you know, two, actually three days, they're like, please, you know, we'll up your, your purse. You know, at that time, I was gonna get paid a quarter of a million. Mm-hmm. So, man, they, they were getting so desperate because it, it was a big event, and like, you all acknowledged me, I respect, you know, it was a big thing out there in Grozny Chechnya. That was like the Olympics. I mean, they showed me, you know, like mountain, I mean, billboards statues of me and i mean i guess i'm a bigger a big figure in, in russia you know a lot of people you know know me you know in russia through my amateur you know career you know my last when i was in the usa team i beat russia that was my last uh, victory in the amateur before i turned pro in 97 with dan goose and america presents but uh yeah so i i didn't know how popular i was in russia so you know these guys were just you know like you know pleading me like man listen not only i said all right, you know, you're talking about from two hundred fifty thousand a million dollars. Oh, that sounds pretty. But one thing that really made me go in the last you know, in the eleventh hour was they were guaranteeing me a rematch. You know, if the fight you know ends up close, controversial, you know, I said cool. So I signed it, and that's how the fight ended. Controversy. A lot of people thought I won. I don't know if you checked it out. You should check mm-hmm. it out it's on YouTube. Whooped them his own, busted them up even after the the fight. You know, the the, the, the president was like. And this dude looked like he got well, but you know, but of course they were happy because the fix was in, and mm-hmm. you know they put their boy as champ. 
So they promised to pay me a quarter of a million at at the airport. I'm like, wait a minute, I just signed a contract, you know, from a quarter of a million. You guys will pay me a million. So I'm like, I'm not gonna take that. I mean, so you know, I guess they didn't want word to get to Kadyrov, the president of Grozny Chechnya, the former mm -hmm. Republic of USSR. Mm -hmm. So you know, they're like, okay, you know what? We'll talk to you when you get back home. Just call us. We'll send you know, we'll wire transfer. So man, I'm over here, Wayne, Wayne, you know. So after a hard fight, you know, I left. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you about the story about my wife and son. So they got better. So two days before the fight, I was I was like, okay, you know what? You know, okay, because I, I talked to my pastor, I talked to my brother, all my advisors, and they say, okay, one clause that's missing, the rematch. So, you know, the middle of that sounds good, but you're not 100%. You know, mentally, physically, you are mentally, because you know I live a clean life, don't drink right. smoke, you know, I, I, so I'm like, okay, so they put that clause in, and that's like two days before the fight. You know, I got there, you know, from straight flight to Poland. From Poland, they got me a private jet to Grozny, Chechnya, uh, you know, passing Moscow and all that. So they show me mad love, man. You know, I got there on time, you know, right day, the way in, you know what I'm saying? I was knocked out. So the timing was pretty perfect that I left in two days because I was in jet lag. It's crazy that I witnessed something that, a lot of fighters don't even know. You know, normally they leave a week before a fight. You know, so they get, you know, they get climb, you know, climated, whatever. But yeah, man, it was two days. I felt great, man. I woke up with sustained energy that that, that fight night for the heavyweight championship. So, uh, you know, I ended up going there and, uh, you know, I met the the, um, the president of Chechnya, you know, Kadyrov. So they showed me mad love. The win was successful. You know, I'm thinking. You know they're gonna hold their end of the bargain, which they thought their you know their cronies gonna end their end of the bargain. Next, you know, after the fight, you know, controversial went twelve rounds. Uh, you know, a lot of people thought I won. Got to the airport, you know, we, we ended up, you know, like disagreeing because they came with a bag. You know, uh, the Grossi, you know, the promoter, he had a bag of two hundred fifty thousand dollars cash. It looks good. I'm like, okay, cool, but where's my million dollars? Oh yeah. no, we get it. So I so I always felt something was cooking. The cook was, you know, the fix was I'm like, oh, here we go. And then um, you know, you know, I'm like, man, you know what? What well, well, you know, I'm not gonna take the 250. You know, my trainer there, I thought I was crazy. Nate Jones, like, man, you might some man. <laughs> but I was, you know, I'm a man of principle, you know, I wow. grew up, you know, in the projects, you know, I came from you know, from hardcore streets and all that, but you know, I earned, you know, I earned my, my stripes by getting these wars and getting this accolade to the heavyweight championship. I'm not going to just be pimp, you know. I, I mean, I'm a man of principle. I'm not going to, no, no, no. You know what? We'll, we'll, we'll talk because I already, in my mind, know that when I, once I get back, the WBA, the World Boxing Association, is going to do their job, which, you know, in their bylaw, it states when you fight for heavyweight championship, they make sure you get paid what you guys agree. And they make sure you get paid before anybody else get paid. That wasn't a case for me when I got home. So when I got home, I ended up filing, you know, uh, you know, we waited, actually we waited a couple of weeks, actually a month or two months. And next thing you know, uh, you know, they ended up sending me like $210,000. So I'm thinking, okay, yeah, we'll send you some more. And then I wait another month. Next thing you know, I'm like, you know what, it's crazy. So I ended up going, you know, Having you know my my brother and other advisors advise me, I end up filing a, a lawsuit against Rusan Chigai and his promoters. You know, and then I end up going to Southern District of New York. You know, I ended up getting a, a high powered attorney, Judge Bernstein. The catch with that was, again, John Work. You know, the man who plays different hats. You know, what benefits him and his pockets was what I thought was representing me in good faith. He ended up. You know, that was his, his buddy, uh, Judd Burstyn, who's a powerful attorney. You know, he beat uh, a lot of cases. He helped Leonard Lewis when Leonard Lewis had that case against Don King. Yeah. A lot, lot, yeah, a lot, lot of other fights. But this, 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 this attorney was, was big. The catch was, you know, the fix with that. So John Wert and him, they ended up making a deal or something. So I ended up having to give, you know, damn near half of my, per, you know, whatever, you know, of my million dollars to – this Judd Bernstein, but I'm pretty sure they were kicking John, you know, yeah. something. So can you believe that, you know, once I won, you know, I won the kid, the guy did his thing. I mean, it was clear as day that they violated the WBA, you know, didn't do their job. And on top of that, John Work, they sent John Work just to 
proved that I was gonna get to Chester. They had to, they they transferred wild to John Worth's uh, escrow account. A million dollars, a million dollars, right before the fight. You know, that's what I thought. So I knew I had security. I had that million dollars. Next thing you know, uh, you know, we get back, you know, after the fight and all that. I said, John, okay, you got the million dollars. That's when everything started. Say, uh, wow. you know, I had to send it back. And actually, the the one who put the million dollars was Rubinsky, Andre Rubinsky. That name sound familiar? Rubinsky. He's the promoter of uh, 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 the guy who just beat uh, Dylan White. Uh, what's that fight? Oh, uh, uh, the Russian. Yes, 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 yes. Povetkin. 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Povetkin. So that, that's, you know, he's a billionaire. You know, I don't know if you heard yeah. about his promoter. Yeah, well, that guy put the mail next. You know, John sent it back. So that's why I helped broke. So I had to, you know, file on my own, you know, Southern District of New York. And he put in Judd Bernstein. So I had to give him a majority of my money, you know. So I won the case. Everything's clear. Took a year. You know, that million dollars, I ended up getting a third a third of that debt. Yeah. And here I am today, man. Uh, the WBA failed to protect the fighters, you know. I'm a you know, poster child of that, and uh, now they're, you know, on the ropes, you know. And they, the attorney, uh, Bob Mack, he, who was long, you know, long-serving attorney to the WBA, he told my attorney, I knew this was coming. Another way he's saying that his client, Roberto Mendoza, who's the president of the WBA, you know, while, while you know, he was risking a, of a major lawsuit by, you know, putting me on the shelf. And, and you know, the rest of the history, we could talk about the rest, you know, the Shannon Briggs, you know, uh, uh, Manu Charles and, and, and Lucas Brown. But I just want to give you the synopsis of why we got here with the WBA, you know, for the injustice. Yeah, definitely.